Well, praise the Lord and welcome to my office here at Crossway Church in Queen City, Texas. I'm Pastor Curtis Hutchinson. Glad to be with you today live right now on my Pastor Curtis Facebook page. Hopefully it's going out live on the YouTube channel, Curtis Hutchinson 316. If not, you can find it later uploaded there as well as the website, thecrosswaychurch.com. We're in our study of the book of Romans, and today uh, will be part two of chapter 10, and uh, going to see some incredible, marvelous things today, very interesting, uh, possibly challenging, but hopefully most of all encouraging for us who are looking for the truth of God's Word. That's what we must find when we're in our study uh, if that's not what we're looking for and that's not what we're finding, then we will be confused and probably have lives of disorder and disarray and, and always wonder why things are not the way they should be in my Christian walk. If you begin to find the truth of God's Word and His name is Jesus and it's what He did at Calvary that you will always find the Holy Spirit pointing you to so that He can lead you in that path of righteousness that, he, that Jesus worked for us at Calvary. And today we're going to be looking <clears throat> in this 10th chapter, as I said, today is part 2 of this uh, Romans chapter 10, but what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to read the first three verses and then we're going to have to back up to the very end of chapter 9 because I hope you know that when you have your daily Bible study, uh, you don't just move in to the new every day because it, you have to always look back and see where you were because in, in our study of God's Word, it's although it's new every day and God has new things for us, new daily bread again today, but we never leave behind anything. Everything God loads us with as far as the truth he wants it to be retained. He wants to, uh, to supply it into your heart. He wants to write the truth of God's Word in your heart. And we, we never just get something, then leave it and go for the next. And uh, most likely that's what we've done as Christians for years. We've got a, a little bit, and then we just let it go and look for something else. But we take with us everything God gives us, and it's all working together for our good. Uh, it's like the story of Jesus Christ and what He did at Calvary. It's not, it's not just that we believe that and we got saved and now we leave that and go into... No, Jesus taught you have to daily deny yourself and take up your cross, which is maintaining your faith in the cross that He carried, He died on for you. And I'm not talking about a wooden stick. I'm talking about your faith remaining in what He did, what He worked for you at Calvary. That's taking up your cross. He died for you. You died with Him there. Think about that. And Jesus said you must deny yourself and take up your cross daily if you're going to follow Him. There is no following the Jesus Christ of the Bible without our faith being in Today, what he did 2,000 years ago on that cross, which was humbly and obediently dying for, for us to be forgiven of our sins, delivered from the bondage of sin, and to have the Holy Spirit's guidance into all truth, receiving more grace to lay up treasures for ourselves in heaven, yes, but to bear forth the fruits of His righteousness. Righteousness is a very important topic. If you're listening to this, you, you, you really uh, want to hear last night's message. I'm working on that this morning. Had some difficulties last night, uh, but I'm working on that. It'll be uploaded later on here in a little while, but watch this now. In, in chapter 10, Paul is very concerned about the lineage, physical, fleshly lineage of Abraham. And he's already told us previously that not all Israel is Israel. Israel means the people of God. Not all Israel is Israel. Not all the people that pile up in church every week are really the church. Everybody that hangs out among saved people are not all saved. The Lord told me in 1994 that most people, the most people who think they're saved are really not. Now, I, as far as specifics, that's what he told me in 1994. Most people that think they're saved are not. And when you talk to people, you'll find out 
what they're trusting in. And nine times out of ten, it's not Christ and His work at Calvary that they've trusted in. And I'm not talking about other cultic, uh, cultish religions. I'm talking about that which claims to be Christian. You just talk to them. And that's a problem Christians have. They don't want to talk about it. And that's, that's another problem. But it, all Israel is not Israel. But watch this. Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved because they weren't. For I bear them record that they have a zeal for God, but not according to knowledge. Whatever zeal they had for God, the knowledge that brought that zeal they had for God was not proper. It wasn't biblical. It wasn't knowledge that God was giving them. Watch this. Here's why. For they being ignorant of God's righteousness. And the word ignorant does not always just mean I don't know. It means, see, there's another word inside ignorant, and it's the word ignore. And that's exactly what Israel did when Jesus was presented to them as their Savior. They rejected Him. All the scriptures lined up that they saw He was fulfilling scripture. He was fulfilling the righteousness of the law of God's Word, and they ignored Him, rejected Him. Watch, for they being ignorant of God's righteousness, here's how they were. Here, here's how they. Here, here's where we see the proof of that they rejected Him because they are going about to establish their own righteousness, having not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. Now I made a statement in last night's sermon that I'm going to make again right now and oh how precious it is to me. And it's this. I've never said this before and I'm sure there's other men that have but, but this has never been in any of my messages over the last 15 years that the righteousness of God is a power that must be humbly and obediently surrendered to. I'm going to say that again. You might need to write that down and think about that. The righteousness of God is a power that has to be surrendered to humbly and obediently. And if you think about it, of course, Jesus is always the picture we look at. He surrendered to this righteousness that He was fulfilling every jot and every tittle of the law as He lived without sin fulfilling the law and perfectly doing so in that he humbled himself and became obedient even unto the death of the cross. And see, that act of obedience was him fulfilling his surrender to the Father that commanded him, John 10 and 18, commanded him, his Father commanded him to come and lay his life down and to take it up again. Jesus said, no man take my life from me, but I have, here it comes, I have power to lay it down and to take it up again because I have this commandment from the Father. So therefore, if you think about that and you put Isaiah 32 and 17 with what we're talking about right now. This is called righteously dividing the scriptures. That is their perfect context. Their only context is righteousness. The Bible says there in Isaiah 32 and 17, the work of righteousness is peace. And he made our peace by the blood of his cross, Colossians 1.20. Jesus did the, the work of righteousness. All the works that we call works of righteousness today, us being filled with the fruits of righteousness today, only flow through our faith in the cross today, not 40 years ago, not four days ago. Today we must be trusting in Christ and what He did at Calvary. Not only was the work of righteousness, peace, but that scripture goes on there to say in Isaiah 32 and 17, and the effect of that righteousness is quietness and assurance. Now think about that. When Jesus approached John the Baptist and said, I need you to baptize me, John the Baptist said, what? No, I need you to baptize me. And Jesus said, no, let us do this 
as we are fulfilling all righteousness. Fulfilling all righteousness. And Jesus was surrendered daily to the leading of the Holy Spirit. And what was He doing? Fulfilling righteousness daily. Completely, totally obeying every jot, every tittle, every commandment, every ceremony, every ritual, every rite, every uh, feast, everything that God had commanded His people to do, Jesus was carrying out every bit of it <coughs> with no flaws, total surrender. There's that word, total surrender. That's what God was looking for, a man that would be fully surrendered to him even unto death. Jesus fulfilled that. So let me say this again. The righteousness of God is a power. Remember, the work of righteousness. Jesus had the power to lay his life down and to take it up again. That work of righteousness. He had, I'm just giving you scriptures, John 10 and 18. He had the power to lay his life down and to take it up again. That power was the power of the Holy Spirit, but it was also the power of righteousness because he was fulfilling it along the way, each step of the way. And the work of righteousness, his perfect life that allowed him to be our perfect sacrifice, the result of that was peace for you and me. Peace, the peace of God, peace with God, the wrath of God gone, our guilt and shame gone. And now the effect of that work, that power of righteousness, when we surrendered through faith in Him and His work at Calvary became peace to us, quietness of soul for us, assurance to us. Hallelujah. That's why we God can say in Romans chapter 8 that the, the Spirit bears witness with the, the Spirit of God. Our Spirit bears witness, that assurance with the Spirit of God that we are the children of God. I'm not wondering am I saved. I'm not wondering am I a child of God. I have that assurance because my faith has remained... That the people who've gotten saved and then they're, don't, the, the devil, he'll try to tell you sometimes you're not saved. And if you're not continuing to look at the faithfulness of God and what he did in that righteous work through Christ's death at Calvary, you might be start wondering, well, I don't know if I'm saved. But you look back to Calvary and you'll be reminded that's what you're trusted in, not your failures, not your mess that you keep getting in, but the perfection of that sacrifice. Hallelujah. And by the way, this Sunday coming up is Easter Sunday the resurrection day we call it and the resurrection is just the declaration of the perfection of the sacrifice glory to God it took both Jesus had to die Jesus had to be raised from the dead but the resurrection only happened because of the cross of Christ because he had atoned for all sin. So watch this verse 3 now in chapter 10. For they, Israel, being ignorant, ignoring God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness, have not submitted. There it is. They've not surrendered. They've not accepted themselves unto the righteousness of God. What prevented them... In what way did they not submit themselves? Did they not surrender? They wouldn't accept Christ as the Savior, as the end of the law for righteousness, as, as the one God sent who He promised from Genesis 3.15 to Adam and Eve, the seed of the woman will come and crush the enemy's head and he'll bruise his heel. That's the story of Calvary. And then God turned around and, and showed them that it would take place through the sacrifice. But they wouldn't surrender to that. You have to surrender to this truth. And let me say something to the ministers who listen to these broadcasts. Let me tell you something, preachers. You've got to surrender to this truth every day so that, you're, so that you can keep putting this truth on the table every day so that your people can have their faith in the power of God every day. Hallelujah. They've not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. You have to submit yourself, surrender yourself, not just once that got you in the kingdom and made you a part of the body of Christ, placed you in Christ, daily to be able to bear these fruits of righteousness to serve God. Nobody on the planet today is serving God outside of faith in Christ. They may still be going through the motions of doing what God called them to do. 
But you better remember that one of the churches in, in, in the book of Revelation, they were doing what they were supposed to do. But Jesus said, look, you better return to your first love or I'm going to take the light of your witness away. Now think about that. It's, it's, it's very important that you know these things. It's not just that you got saved and you got in. The Lord's looking for the fruit of His righteousness today. Think about that. So let's turn back to the end of chapter 9. And let's, let's start with verse 30. Watch this now. Let's talk about Israel. Let's talk about the Gentiles, of which we are Gentiles, most of us. In verse 30, the Bible says, the end of chapter 9, What shall we say then that the Gentiles, which followed not after righteousness, have attained to righteousness, even the righteousness which is of faith? See, that word faith, when you write the word faith, say the word faith, it means absolutely nothing unless you're equating that with a surrender from the heart to trusting in the truth of God's Word. Amen. Let me say something again that I said in one of the broadcasts this week. You don't get to pick and choose what you want out of the Bible. You have a choice of maintaining your faith exclusively in Christ and His work at Calvary and then the Holy Spirit according to where you are. And we're all in different places. We're all functioning in different families, different jobs, different situations in our lives. And the Holy Spirit, because you're still trusting in the righteous work of Christ, He can now, if He can get you to the place where you become a student of God's Word because you want to learn God's Word, you want to learn the way of Christ to please Christ, to follow Christ, and yes, you can only do that through faith in the cross, but when your faith is really in the sacrifice of Christ today, the Holy Spirit's going to be able to get you in the Word. Then He's going to be able to pull the, the truth out of the Word and put it in your heart and guide you into it. And it's only in that path of righteousness that the fruits of His righteousness are going to take place. Again, let me say this, Romans chapter 6 bears it out line after line. It's very simple. It's pre-K. You don't have to be a Bible scholar to see it. It's right there. If you'll just read the process of progress taking place in Romans chapter 6, you'll see that what happened was when you believed upon Christ and what He did about your sins dying on your behalf, that you were declared righteous and made a servant of righteousness. And if you keep reading in Romans chapter 6, you will see that there is no avenue unto holiness except through your serving righteousness, which takes place only because you're trusting in today, again, today, again, today, again, today in the work of righteousness Christ provided for you in His death. The only way to holiness, it's righteousness that's unto holiness. And just because you're righteous doesn't mean that you are living a holy life. Can I get a witness? I speak from experience. And we all, if we're honest, will say, I know what you're talking about. But it's only as we serve righteousness, which means our faith remains in the sacrifice of Christ, that's the only avenue that's unto holiness. And Hebrews tells us that unless we're following after <coughs> peace, which Christ... <coughs> worked for us at Calvary, unless we're following after peace, that avenue through which it comes, and holiness, no man shall see the Lord. That's what's been wrong with the church for almost the 2,000 years since Christ came for us. Listen, and gave Himself for us. We, 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 we think that we, we, we never really knew this, I don't think. It's always been here, but we've been so subtly manipulated by false religion and the lust of our own flesh, and we, we have such a zeal for God as children of God, and we get moved away uh, thinking that we can do all these things. And we are called to do walk in many works, Ephesians 2.10, but none of them can make us righteous. None. And only as we're led of the Holy Spirit through a surrender to this righteousness of God means faith in the cross are we going to 
experience Him leading us into the Scriptures where He wants us to be, not where we want to be. A Bible study is not about where I want to be. A Bible study is about the Lord bringing me the truth I need in my situation, which is different from your situation. My family's different, the job, the the circumstances, and I don't get to pick and choose. That's what we've done for years. I get to pick and choose what I put my faith in. Then the Holy Spirit gets to bring the Word of God to me as it is truth in its righteous context. Amen. Think about that. And guide me into the truth I need for me and my family today to experience the benefits of the salvation offered to me through Christ and His death. So watch this now. Verse 31, the end of chapter 9, But Israel which followed after, they followed after the law of righteousness, have not attained to the law of righteousness. They never attained it. They never attained it. Why? Verse 32 says, why? Because they sought it not by faith, but as it were by the works of the law. You can't get it by works. And you can't have the fruit of it today, child of God, unless it's the work of the Holy Spirit. Remember the power that Jesus had to lay his life down and to take it up again was the power of the Holy Spirit he was surrendered to daily as a man. Jesus was fully God and fully man and the Godhead was in him bodily, but Jesus had to live as a man being led by the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit only leads in the path of righteousness. Get that. He only leads in the path of righteousness. Jesus is your picture. Jesus is the one you look at to see this carried out. Think about that. No work I do gets me, makes me righteous or even allow, doesn't mean because I'm doing a work that it's the fruit of His righteousness. A lot of what's being done in the church today is the fruit of our self-righteousness. Now, I'm not being ugly, but that's just the way it is, and I'm talking about 90-something percent of what's being done today is just being done for self, by self, because if our faith is not in the cross, and it's not if it's not being preached all the time to the people of God so that their faith will stand in the power of God. We need to get back to that, or we're just going to stay in the rut we've been in for centuries where we know how to get saved, but nobody knows how to live for God. Then we go right back to doing everything under the power of self. Think about that. Works won't do it. Only by faith. That means with the heart, I believe, under the work of righteousness. Watch this now. This this gets very interesting and very uh, informative. Why did Israel not attain the law of righteousness? Because they didn't seek it by faith. They never submitted to Christ, but as it were by the works of the law, for they stumbled at that stumbling stone. The word stumble means they tripped up. It really means that they struck it. You know, it's like in the middle of the night, you're going through the house uh, hitting that precious shin on a coffee table. It's like you tripped over it. You struck it. That's what the word, look it up. I challenge you, look it up. That's what you'll find it means, to strike, to trip over, uh, to surge at. And, And that's exactly what they did. But it says they stumbled at that stumbling stone. But the interesting thing is in verse 33, the last verse of chapter 9 in Romans, the Bible calls that stumbling stone a hymn which refers to Jesus. Watch this. As it is written, Behold, I lay in Zion a stumbling stone and rock of offense. Talking about our rock of ages, Jesus. Watch this. And whosoever believes on him. Doesn't say it. Jesus is the stumbling stone for all who will not surrender to the righteousness of God, that power that's there. See, when people resist, like Israel did, 
even Christians for the way of the cross being the way they the, the way they have to live even after they're saved they're tripping over it they're trying to work their way uh, through the kingdom they're trying to work uh, their way into presenting themselves daily to God they're trying to work for righteous fruit daily and and we are called ordained to walk in in good works but they're all in Christ Ephesians 2:10 and just because you're in Christ does not mean that you're you're walking in Him. Remember the great paramount scripture that we've learned over the last 15 years, Colossians 2 and 6 tells us, as you have received the Lord Jesus Christ, therefore so walk ye in Him. That faith that puts you in Him is the only faith God honors and sees you as walking in Him with. When we move our faith from in Him, His work, that work of righteousness, Whatever it is. Well, I've read five pages today. Well, I went and fed the hungry. Well, I did this and now I'm expecting all. Our faith can easily be moved into our works instead of trusting in that one work that all the works of God flow through only. This is the very process of by grace through faith. We need to get back to this. Not for a one-time sermon. This is what we need to be hearing on a regular level. Uh, 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 listen, this is what we need to be hearing at all times. Paul said, I've become determined to know absolutely nothing but Christ and Him crucified. It's on every page of your Bibles because our Bibles are the words of the cross. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I'm excited about this. He says, As it is written, Behold, I lay in Zion a stumbling stone and rock of offense, and whosoever believes on him shall not be ashamed. The whole world, even Christianity today, who's moved away from the cross and trusting in something other, the horoscope, some lucky this, lucky that, the, the, the list is beyond number in counting of what we could be trusting in our good deeds. Today, Christianity has become nothing more than a morally good uh, a way that we live. And listen, lost people, some lost, many lost people to look at are nice, upright citizens in the community. They just don't want anything to do with Jesus. They're, they're resisting, here it comes, they're resisting the power of righteousness because they're trying to attain their own by being good, upstanding, upright citizens. I own a business. I have a good family. I work hard. My kids were raised. They work hard. And we blah, blah, we blah, blah, we blah, blah. And it's a bunch of blah, blah to God if it's not faith alone in Christ's work of righteousness. That's the only work that God has ever accepted. I would say ask Cain, but hopefully none of us will ever see Cain. And that's really where the church has been. We, we became, after we were saved, Cain was never saved, but we became like Cain after we were saved in that we've just been vagabonds and wanderers from one conference to the next, one, one object of faith to the next. Oh, oh, have you got the new book that come out this year? I feel like this is really going to be the big move of God this year. By six months later, that's gone. What's next? What's coming next? We've gone, listen, come back to Calvary. Calvary, my friend. We're talking about you and me daily surrendering to the power of God's righteousness through faith in the cross of Christ. His humility, His obedience becomes our humility and our obedience daily if that's where we fight the good fight of faith. His faith, keeping our faith in what He did by grace through faith. And that way we won't keep tripping over this thing. We won't keep tripping over, stumbling over, striking this, surging at, but missing it, trying to attain. Now, we Christians know they're righteous because of the blood of Jesus, but what's not being preached and taught and understood is that every single thing we do must be the Holy Spirit working in and through us. Again, Jesus is your picture. You're not 
Jesus, but He's your picture. He's your example. He's your Lord. We are looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. And as we grow in this great truth of the Scriptures, you will find your lives, your marriages, your children, everything will be totally different. The way you see things, the way you think according to this measure of faith you've been given, Romans 12 and 3. Everything becomes new. Everything becomes different. It is not a bed of roses and a tiptoe through the tulips. It will be the way of the cross, which is a daily surrender to God's righteousness, the power of His righteousness. And as I close, I'm going to make that statement again. The righteousness of God is a power that has to be surrendered to humbly and obediently every day. It's our choice. That's not by what we go and do. That's simply by trusting in the one who was humbled and obedient unto death for us. That's the only avenue of grace, faith, humility, and obedience that exists. When we walk away from that, and we do, whether we don't even know it, we're deceived, and we become ignorant of the way of God's righteousness for living for Him, bearing forth His fruits that Jesus might be magnified with more than words, Jesus be magnified, but lives being filled with the fruits of righteousness. Glory to God, this has been good today. I hope you've been encouraged, challenged, and moving forward with eyes seeing a greater picture of the value of Christ and His sacrificial work at Calvary. Yes, He's no longer on the cross. Yes, He's at the right hand of the Father. But it's the object of faith and the only one, the only work God has ever honored and the only work that God moves through is the truth of Jesus Christ and Him crucified. And you don't need to forget that. I love you. Uh, Don't forget to pray for us. Don't forget to sow to the ministry on the website, thecrosswaychurch.com. Let me ask some of you, when's the last time you sowed any finances into the work of God? There are many people that claim to be Christians who never support financially the work of God with some misconception, really deception, uh, that God doesn't need money. Well, that is a fact but it takes money for people to be able to do even what I'm doing right now today, the equipment, the time, all that, to get the expositor study Bibles into the hands of inmates who are requesting them, to plant new churches preaching this message, to see churches all over the world coming home, coming back to the, to the place of the power of God's righteousness. You can sow uh, into this ministry as easily as through the website, hitting the donate button, or on your smartphone, 903-231-5950. Reap a blessing by sowing into good ground. We love you, and until next time, stay determined to know absolutely nothing but Christ and Him crucified. See you then.